You know, there's been a lot of talk lately about Black Lives Matter, and people try to counter that with it by saying all lives matter. Um, and people try to make it not about race or this or that or whatever. But uh, I'm going to present to you a different view, a view that's based on the scriptures. And that is that no lives matter except one. I want to show you what the Bible has to say about that. Romans chapter 3. I am a King James Bible believing preacher. I believe that this King James Bible right here is God's perfect word. That's what I believe. I don't believe it has errors in it. I don't believe it should be updated or retranslated or whatever else. I believe God gave it to us perfectly for the English speaking world back uh, many years ago. Romans chapter 3 verse 4 says, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Um, you can be justified in your sayings when you are a King James Bible believer. Why? See, I have a standard. Um, black lives matter. All lives matter. What's the standard? This group doesn't agree with this one. That one doesn't agree with that one. What's the standard? Yea, let God be true. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. That is, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Well, the black people, they're, they're the ones that are righteous. No, the white people. No, the Asians. No, the, the, all lives matter. No, none righteous. It's what God wrote in his word. Verse 11, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. No lives matter. When you get right down to it. Except for one, which I'll show you here in just a couple minutes. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 through 27 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Does that include you? Yes. You say, what about you? Oh, sure. Absolutely. It includes me as well. No lives matter. All have sinned. All. There's none righteous. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. It's kind of funny because there's a lot of this economy stuff going on. They call it forbearance. Your house goes into forbearance, meaning you can't pay. Well, think about something. If nobody's good, if no lives matter, are you in forbearance when it comes to sin? You can't pay. You can never appease God with your righteousness. So then whose life really matters? Yours? No. Because the Bible says there's none righteous. Whose life matters? Only one man that ever lived, and that is God manifest in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. His life is all that matters, but you can be connected to his life. Verse 26, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, not yours, not mine, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Did you know Jesus Christ can justify you? Did you know that he can give you a purpose, a meaning in life? Verse 27, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Your works don't mean anything. You say, well, I've been out protesting. I've been out pounding the streets and doing legislation. And what's it going to mean? Nothing. Nothing at all. All lives matter. We're going to go out and we're going to counter protest the, the Black Lives Matter movement. We're going to white militias and we're going to, what does it mean? Do you think God cares? God doesn't care. He said so in his word. All have sinned. There's none righteous. There's none that seeketh after God. That's what God thinks of you. Hmm. No lives matter. Go to Romans chapter 4, verse 4 through 8, if you have a King James Bible, if you're saved. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You have to have faith in what Jesus did on the cross. Understanding that God's grace put Jesus on the cross to die because you're such a miserable, rotten sinner. Your life doesn't matter. Jesus Christ's life matters. But let's continue here. Verse 6. 
even as David also describeth, describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Is that a blessing? God's up there and he's judging you. He judges every thought that you've ever had. He judges every secret thing that you've ever done that nobody else knows about. And of course, your actions, your deeds, whatever else, the words that come out of your mouth, that filthy language that Black Lives Matter uses, he's judging every single word, every single thing. And you mean nothing more to him than a bug or an insect. You're not important to him unless you're connected with his son. Hmm. And then when you get saved by faith, God's grace through faith, that grace there. He provides you the way to heaven. He justifies you. And he imputes the righteousness of his perfect son to you. And he takes your dirty, vile, wicked life and he puts it on himself on the cross. See? That's how you have meaning in life. That's how your life matters. But before that, without that, no. Your life doesn't matter. You need to be connected to Jesus Christ. And then notice, by the way, it's not, well, I got saved by grace through faith and now the good things that I've done, God's impressed by those. Uh, no, no. When Salvation is all about Jesus Christ. You need to think about that. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. For we, when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. You're without strength. Your life doesn't matter. Just his mind didn't matter. But Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hmm. Much more than being now justified by his blood, not your blood, his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him, through Jesus Christ. You see whose life really matters in God's sight? The life of Jesus Christ is what matters. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. By the life of Jesus Christ, not your life. Your life doesn't matter. My life doesn't matter. Oh, but I, I, I enjoy you know, walks in the park and chocolate cake and butterflies in the springtime. Who cares? Well, I enjoy uh, uh, rap music and, and, and uh, night clubs. And, uh, who cares? Your life doesn't matter. There's none righteous. There's none that doeth good. God doesn't care about you unless you're con connected with his son, Jesus Christ. Well, I believe that God's love is unconditional. Okay, show me that in the scriptures. God's love was manifested for man at Calvary when Jesus died on the cross. And if you don't meet God there, then your life doesn't matter to him. Plain and simple. I'll show you another passage of Scripture here. 1 John chapter 5. You say, well, you're just, you're just trying to get me into this religious stuff. You're just trying to get me in, into this Christianity thing, go to church and whatever. I didn't say to go to church. Uh, and the Bible doesn't say to go to church. Okay, nobody, nobody went to church in the entire Bible. All right, New Testament I'm talking about for a Christian. Um, it's not there. Uh, when you get saved, you are part of the church. Please understand that. And when you read this Bible right here, this King James Bible, you'll see that what modern Christians do has almost zero basis in the pages of this blessed book. No matter what the nomination. 1 John chapter 5, beginning in verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. Remember, ye let God be true, and every man a liar. Hey, you say, does it apply to you? Absolutely. It applies to me. I'm a preacher, minister of righteousness, but you know what? It applies to me. Let me be a liar, and God's word be truth. This needs to be your standard. I'm not trying to get you into my cult or something like that. Right there, King James Bible. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Do you believe this book? You say, no, I don't want anything to do with the book. Okay, then you're going to go to hell. 
and your life doesn't mean anything to God. God doesn't love you. He has no good plans for your future or whatever else. You're a, you're a bug. You're a maggot. You're an ant. You're a worthless whatever. Your life doesn't matter. Why? Because the Bible says so. If you want your life to matter, then you need to be connected to Jesus Christ. The Bible preaches that exact thing. And the only reason the church buildings don't talk to you this way is because they're after your money. Verse 11, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in the good people in Black Lives Matter. No, oh, the good people that are in uh, that are voting for Trump in 2020. The good people, he, no, this life is in his son. The life of Jesus Christ is all that matters. Verse 12, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may, may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. You have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, Almighty God, and Jesus Christ is God, by the way. I don't believe this Trinitarian foolishness that there's three different gods, each one having their own body and whatever. No, different persons up there and think, no, that's not true. Jesus Christ is God, and you won't understand it completely until you get saved, until you're born again. Then the Holy Spirit moves in and starts to reveal things to you. But uh, there's a record out there. You ought to believe it. Finally, Romans chapter 10. We'll go back to Romans chapter 10 and I'll show you. You say, well, I'm interested. What am I supposed to do about this? Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You have to believe the record that God gave of his son. And you have to put your faith in Jesus Christ and come to God as a broken sinner and say, yeah, my life does not matter. My life does not mean anything. In fact, I've really messed up my life. And it's a shame that Jesus Christ had to die on the cross to pay for my sins. But God, I'd like to have his righteousness imputed to me. I'd like to have him pay for my sins. And I believe that he died, truly died on the cross. It wasn't some staged event or something like that. Truly dies on the cross and he's buried and he comes up from the dead. Did George Floyd do that? Brianna Taylor or whatever, some, all these other people, these heroes of the Black Lives Matter movement and whatever that were killed by police and things, police brutality, did, did they? any of them come up from the dead? No. Muhammad? No. Any of the popes? No. There's only one man that died for your sins and he was buried and he rose again the third day just like he said he was going to do. Only one man ever did it and that's Jesus Christ. You can have a personal relationship with him. Verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see, the whole point of coming to the Lord for salvation is you come to Him and you say, and you start to talk to Him. You never cared in the past. Oh, I'll say a little prayer or something now and then. No, no. You come now and you say, you know what? My life doesn't matter anymore. God, I want to be saved. I don't want to go to hell when I die. See, that's what the Lord does, by the way. It isn't just, well, God doesn't care and you die and, well, whatever. You just cease to exist. Oh, no. He'll burn you for all of eternity because you didn't get things figured out. What's the point of life? What's the point? Why are we here? The great question of man. Why is man here? To get to know your creator. Well, I don't really have time. Okay, then you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn. That's what the, the Bible says. That's the record that God says. You ought to get to know your, your, your creator and understand that he's your savior. Verse 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever, there, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God can save you. He can give your life meaning because he connects your worthless life with the life of his son. It's called imputed righteousness. All the wicked things that you've done, nailed to the cross paid for in full. And Jesus Christ's perfect sinless life and eternity that dwells within the Godhead, 
He gives it to you. And then your life has meaning. Then your life matters. But if you're part of some political stupid organization, Black Lives Matter or all, well, just All Lives Matter, White Lives Matter with our white militia or whatever it is, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. And when the killing starts, and it will start, I'll give you a pure word of prophecy there, the killing is going to start very soon, I believe. Um, when it starts, you're going to see very quickly that your life doesn't matter. Your life doesn't mean a thing. You are expendable. You better get your relationship to God figured out soon because you might not have that much time left. And by the way, don't fall for these uh, fake preachers that tell you that you don't have to humble yourself. You don't have to repent. You don't have to come in a broken state. You just believe it in your mind. It's an intellectual decision that you make. You say, yeah, I believe the, the gospel account in here. So, bling, I'm saved. No, you need to start talking to God. You need to come before God and say, God, please save me. And go through the whole thing. Pour out your heart to God. And just say, I'm, I'm wicked. You know, hey, here's a good one. Is this preacher telling me the truth, God? I'm going to get a King James Bible and I'm going to look this stuff up for myself. Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 through 27. Romans chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 14. And finally, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. Wrote these scriptures down. So I could stay on task and get through these scriptures and present them to you and help you to understand your life doesn't matter until you get saved. And then it only matters because you're connected to Jesus Christ. That's the simple truth of the matter. And when all the killing starts in the future, you're just going to be another one of the bodies. You know, look at the history of World War II and things are just bulldozing bodies into trenches and things. People start dying into the thousands and hundreds of thousands and in, into the millions. There's no time for funerals. There's no time for loved ones and whatever else. I mean, they already have rules in place that you can't even go visit loved ones because of this supposed coronavirus thing. You see, there's desensitizing people. And you're going to realize in the future, if you don't realize it already, that your life doesn't mean anything. Unless it's connected to Jesus Christ. I pray you get your salvation figured out today because time is running out.